from the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of Congo murder. Johnny Convey had met many men since he'd arrived in Africa, but of them all, Tarzan was the only one he looked upon as a real friend. The handsome suntanned youth had hurried the 50 miles to Tarzan's seacoast cabin. Now he burst in, too full of excitement and enthusiasm to bother with knocking. I found it, Tarzan. Johnny, hello. I found it at last. The gold you've been searching for? You're not kidding. Wait till I show you something. Yeah, here's Lulu, the first gold nugget I found. I drilled that hole through so I could wear the string around my neck. Lulu sure brought me luck. Lulu was not the last gold you found, I presume. Tarzan, I made a richer strike than I ever dreamt of. More of it than I can spend in a lifetime. Johnny, do you want my advice? Sure, what? Take the pick you used to unearth the gold and bury it twice as deep as it was. Then forget about it. Are you nuts? You're happy today, and I, I'd like to see my friends happy, but you won't remain that way if you keep the gold, Johnny. It brings nothing but evil. Evil? Are you kidding? This gold's going to do more good than a barrel of lemonade at a Fourth of July picnic. I've never seen gold do anything but bad. Uh, watch my dust when I get home. I've got a dad who was hurt in a mine cave in when I was just a kid. My folks haven't had a really decent meal or a halfway fit place to live since then. But that's all going to change now. I'm going to buy him the best house in town. Then I'm going to buy Dad the most expensive suit that's made, and I'll doll Mom up like she was a queen. She always wanted a black velvet dress with real lace. And you want nothing for yourself, Johnny? Why, sure I do. I'm no tin angel. I got a girl who's been waiting for me for six years now. Won't even go to a movie with any other guy. Well, I'm going to make everything up to her now. We'll have a wedding like a couple of movie stars. And after we're married, we'll live the life of Riley. Yes, I, I thought that's the sort of thing you'd plan for yourself. Oh, now you think I'm selfish, huh? Well, I won't. Be honest, I won't, Tarzan. I'm one guy who's going to get a thrill out of being rich. Well, it's a beautiful picture, Johnny. I hope it works out the way you planned. And I'm glad you came to tell me your good news. Well, frankly, I came because I've got to have a hand taking the gold to Omdurmara. They've got some sort of a government agency there that gives you cash or letters of credit or something for the gold. I'm going to straighten things out with them and then head back for the good old USA. I figure that if you help me, we can get to Omdurmara by Tuesday and then I can see about oh, the rest I'm, of... Oh, I'm sorry, Johnny, but I, I can't do what you ask. Huh? Are you serious? Yes. I don't get it. You've always made a big thing about being my pal. Well, I am your friend, and were you in trouble, I'd gladly risk my life for yours, Johnny. But you want me to leave my jungle to transport gold, gold for which men lie and rob and kill. Even though you now plan to do good with your gold, Johnny, I, I can't help you. Well, that's a pretty fancy speech, but boiled down, all it amounts to is a turndown. A real noble-sounding way of turning down a guy you don't want to help. Oh, Johnny. I intended to give you something for your trouble, but I suppose you're too high and mighty to dirty your hands on my filthy lucre. Now, huh? just a minute. Try, try to understand my way of thinking. You see, many times in the past, men have wanted my help in searching for gold or ivory or, or treasures, and every time I gave in, I saw nothing but violence. As a result, I finally made certain laws for myself, and... Well, wrong or right, I must follow those laws. Okay, okay, forget I asked you. Just skip it. I'll lug it to Amdu tomorrow myself. Oh, you'd be foolish to travel through the jungle with a great quantity of gold, Johnny. Why, why don't you take samples to the government metal exchange at Amdu uh, I understand they need gold badly, and well, they'll be undoubtedly willing to send an armed safari to bring it back, hide it somewhere, and, and let them find You're it. You're just full of advice, aren't you? Oh, now, don't take it that way, Johnny. I, I value your friendship, and though I refuse to transport gold for you, I'll be happy to come with you and... And see that you reach Amdurmara safely. Thanks, just the same, pal. But I wouldn't enjoy traveling in your company. And I can reach there without any help from you. We'll return in just a moment to our story of Congo murder. Few men would have dared to cross the African Congo alone, but Johnny Convey was brave, 
and his three years in the jungle had taught him many secrets of the belt. But not one man among thousands could have distinguished between the trailing green jungle vines and the slender green body of the deadly Atheris viper which hung directly over the narrow trail, directly over a spot where Johnny would pass in a matter of seconds. The viper's neck glands were distended with poison. Its beady eyes gleamed wickedly, and its hungry fangs darted from the cruel slash of mouth. Johnny walked on, nearer and nearer the tree. The viper glided another inch downward. The leaves crinkled under Johnny's feet. The viper arched its flat, ugly head, ready to strike. And as the head shot forward, an arrow sang through the air and pinned it to the tree. What the... An arrow right through its ugly head. Only one man in the world could have made a shot like that. Tarzan! Tarzan! I knew it was you, and I won't have you following me. I told you I could get to Andumar without your help, and I can. I know you saved my life just now, and maybe I ought to be appreciative. You don't have to shout, Johnny. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, first you save my life, then you scare me half to death. Do you always sneak up on people? No, not always. You uh, you sound a little more like the old Johnny now. Well, I've been burned up ever since we had that talk a couple of days ago, but I think I'm over it now. How long have you been following me? Ever since you hid your gold in that cave near the Yusanga village. You saw me hide it? No, your secret's safe with me. Oh, I wasn't worried about that. I, I was afraid you might get into trouble trying to cross the jungle alone. That's why I followed you. Well, thanks, Tarzan. You are a friend. But I think I'll be okay now. I, I, I'd really rather go on alone. I, I've played it single-handed for three years now, and it'll mean something to me to be able to finish up the job by myself. Do you mind? Oh, no, no, Johnny. I've always liked completing my tasks alone, too. And the worst stretch of jungle is behind you. Yeah, that's right. One more day's march, a few business matters, and then for home. I'm still wearing Lulu around my neck, and she's good luck. Nothing can happen to me now. <laughs> Congratulations to you, Mr. Conway. The assay report on the gold you brought is amazing. Whew, that's a relief. <laughs> you were in that laboratory so long, I figured maybe my high school chemistry wasn't so hot. Oh, it was quite hot enough. If the gold you've hidden in that cave is the same as the samples you brought to Andamara, you will be an extremely wealthy young man. It's got to be the same, Mr. Beaumont. It's all from the same load. But you do understand that it's impossible for us to pay until the gold is here and has been carefully weighed and analyzed. Oh, oh sure, I understand that. But I'm anxious to get home... Uh... Could you make me a little advance? Oh, we'd be happy to pay you for the samples. That'll be more than enough to see you home in style. And as soon as our safaris return with the balance of the gold, we'll forward a check for the full amount. Oh, that's terrific. Oh, uh, could I have the money now? Uh, for the samples, I mean. I'll have my clerk draw up a draft for you immediately. But you're forgetting one little incidental, Mr. Conde. You haven't given me the map so that our safari can get the balance of the gold. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess you'll need the map, all right, but... What sort of a guarantee do I have that someone won't take my map and do me out of my three years' work? You mean you don't trust me, Mr. Convict? Oh, sure, sure. I trust you, Mr. Beaumont, but you won't be going in the jungle for this yourself. You're mistaken. This gold is very important to my government. I have every intention of personally heading the safari. Oh, well, that's different. I'm sorry to rush you, but I have a great many things to take care of before I leave. So if you don't mind, the map, please. <laughs> Mais oui, monsieur. You are most fortunate. I can give you reservations on a ship leaving Andromara within a few days. Ah, oh, that's swell. But there is but one difficulty. What's that? All of the less expensive cabins were reserved many months ago. All that I have left are the deluxe cabins. Uh, they are quite expensive. <laughs> is that all? For a minute you had me worried. The price of your reservation is not important to you? Listen, I'll tell you a secret. It wouldn't bother me if you charged me $5,000 to get home. Listen, in a couple of months, I'll have enough dough to buy my own ocean liner. Oh, you have recently come into an inheritance? No, sir. I work for this dough myself, gold mining in the jungle. In the jungle? Oh, but that is amazing. You know, I was told that there was not sufficient gold in the jungle to warrant mining. Yeah, well, don't you believe it, pal. Uh, perhaps you are pulling my leg. You Americans are great jokers. Well, this isn't any joke. 
A guy doesn't kid about something he spent three years working for. Ah, no, 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 no. You are right, monsieur. For many years, I have worked in this dreary steamship office, and I do not joke about it. Well, cheer up, pal. Maybe you can go into the jungle someday and strike it rich, too. Oh, even the adventure without the gold would be enough. But, uh, monsieur, tell me, is it not dangerous coming into a city like Omdurmara laden with gold? Oh, you don't have to worry about me. All I brought were a few samples. Mm. I have heard it is possible to make the arrangements at the exchange for them to transport the gold when it is found. If I were to go into the jungle and make such a discovery, I would make a map showing where I'd hidden it, and I would let them take the risk of going after it. You got it all figured out, huh? But oui, monsieur. I would make a map to give them, and then I would keep a copy so that... I if... didn't say anything about a map... Or a copy. Of course not, monsieur. I was only saying what I would do were I You to seem fi- to be getting awfully nosy about my business. Oh, monsieur, a thousand apologies. Oh, I did not mean to pry. It is only that when I speak of the jungle, I get carried away. Always the jungle to me has the great fascination. Uh, please forgive me, monsieur. Uh, that's all right. Now, uh, how about the ticket, huh? Well, it will take some time to fill out the forms. You are probably staying at the Hotel International, eh? That's right. Well, I shall bring the ticket and the required papers to your hotel tonight. Thank you for the drink, man, here. Ah, uh, just call me Johnny. We're pals, aren't we, Herr Berger? Yeah, we are pals. Johnny and Carl. Tell me, Johnny, how did you happen to pick an old rummy like me to drink with? I should have thought you'd pick a young woman, or at least a younger man. Oh, no, no dames for me till I hit the States. But I came in here to, ce- <clears throat> to celebrate some good luck, and you look like someone who could stand a little celebrating, see? Yeah, celebrating I can stand. Six years I've had nothing to celebrate. Still, I spend my evening drinking... Uh, there's no place in this world for a useless old man, John. Oh, you don't look useless, Herr Berger. I bet in your day you were a real sharp guy, huh? What'd you do, huh? I was a metallurgist, but I made mistakes when I was thrown out. What kind of mistakes? Well, I was working for a company that searched for gold. I selected the spots for their mining operations. Only there was no gold there. Oh, I wish I could tell you where to look so you could get a new start. Oh, but I can't do that. It's too late for me anyway, Johnny. We have another drink, yeah? Sure. Bartender, bring us some schnapps. I've been standing here for the last ten minutes. Here's a bottle here, Berger. Looks like a big evening. Hi, Mr. Beaumont. My clerk says you insisted on seeing me. That's right, Mr. Beaumont. My name is Tarzan. I'm happy to meet you, Tarzan. Now, state your business. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Why? Well, I hardly think my business concerns you, but for what it's worth, I'm leaving tomorrow morning on a jungle safari. To find Johnny Convey's gold, perhaps? Just how much do you know about the gold? All there is to know, I imagine, Johnny Convey is my friend. He told me about his discovery and his plans before he left for Amdamara. He, uh... Intended to come here to the exchange first. Oh? He did see you. Yes. And he gave you the map showing the location of the cave? Perhaps. Exactly what do you know about the cave? Well, I know where it is. What? Now, don't worry. I'm not interested in the gold, but I am interested in Johnny. After I left him in the jungle, I started worrying about him, and, well, I I followed him here. Very considerate of you. And just when did you arrive? This morning, and I can't find Johnny anywhere. He's not at the hotel, and his name wasn't on the passenger list of the French vessel that sailed last night. Of course it wasn't. You sure you arrived only this morning? Well, of course I'm sure. What, what are you getting at? Well, I don't know why those at the hotel didn't inform you. But Johnny Convey was murdered there last night. In just a moment, the exciting conclusion of Congo Murder. It seems to be, Tarzan, that you had the most to gain by young Convy's death. I gained by Johnny's death? How? That's up very simply. 
You knew the location of the cave, and you were aware he intended turning the map over to me. Yes. Having your own secret hideaway not far from the cave, it would be a simple matter for you to steal the gold and keep it hidden until the story of Johnny Conger's death was forgotten. Now, just a minute, Beaumont. You figured that when I came for the gold and found none there... I'd assume that Convy's story was just another of those fables invented by men who've been in the jungle too long. That the comparatively small amount of gold he brought to me was the sum total of his discovery. If that was my plan, why should I have come to call on you? Perhaps to cover up your own tracks. You may have already removed the gold from the cave. I haven't touched the gold, and quite frankly, Beaumont, I suspect that you intend to take Johnny's treasure for yourself instead of for your government. Now, see here, Tarzan. You may have already sent someone ahead to get it, and your safari may be nothing but a blind. I've sent no one ahead. Well, then, according to our claims, the gold should still be there. It should be. I'll, uh, I'll make a bargain with you, Beaumont. We'll enter the jungle together. We'll travel all the way to the cave in the same safari. We shall be able to keep an eye on one another. Agreed. And both of us know that the jungle often reveals the true nature of a man. By the time one of us returns, the truth should be known. Mais oui, Monsieur Tarzan. I waited on Monsieur Convey. I was most distressed to learn of his death. How, how did the hotel happen to tell you of his death? They wouldn't tell me. Well, I know the manager very well. When I came to the hotel with Monsieur Convey's reservations, the manager confided the terrible news to me. But he wanted it kept quiet, of course. The reputation of the hotel, you see. Yes, the reputation of the hotel has never been too shining. Ah, you are right. But if other explorers learn that when they emerge from the jungle with a fortune and then stop at the hotel, uh, naturally what, they what would... What do you know about Johnny Convey's fortune? Well, he was a very friendly young man. He spoke about the gold. He, it was most fascinating. I dare say. You, everything about the jungle is fascinating to a man who works in a humdrum steamship office. <laughs> I hope someday I can travel into the jungle. Suppose, suppose I gave you that opportunity. Come on. I am to be a member of a safari headed by uh, Mr. Hugh Beaumont that leaves for the jungle in the morning. We, uh... We should be delighted to have you as our guest. Oh, but well, that should be most exciting. Oh, well, I, I have a vacation coming soon. I am sure the manager can arrange things so I can leave tomorrow. I would be happy to join you, Monsieur Tarzan. I'm told, Herr Berger, that Johnny Convey's last night on Earth was spent in your company. Yeah, das ist richtig. We were drinking right here at this very table. Uh, you have a drink? No, no, thank you. Then I have a drink alone. Bartender! Bartender! I don't see a bartender on duty. Where did they not go? I certainly need a drink. First I hear of the violent death of a friend. Then I have a great disappointment in my business. Oh, what was that? Uh, you wouldn't be interested in my business. Mm, you're a friend of my friend. I, I am interested. Well, you see, I am a metallurgist. Not a very successful one. But I learned recently about a very interesting discovery in the jungle. Today I tried to raise money to finance an expedition into the interior. I found out my credit is not good. Herr Berger, it, it just so happens that I'm leaving Amdamara with a large safari in the morning. We, we should be delighted to have you join us. The next morning, the strange safari started out. Beaumont and his bearers, Herr Berger, who claimed to be a metallurgist, Delatier, who said he quested only for adventure, and Tarzan, each suspecting the other of Johnny Convey's murder, each believing the rest were interested only in the gold. The trail was rough, and the jagged nerves of the travelers even rougher. By the time camp was made on the second night, the men were snarling at each other. Well, Delatier, you're going to help bring the cartons of food over to the cook stove, or do you intend to rest? Well, can the bearers do it? Oh, they're my bearers, not yours. And you'll do your share of the work around here, or I know the reason why. Come on, Daladier. We'll carry one of the cartons together. We don't have to stand for the insults of the English hunt. I'll carry the packages. They, they weigh little, and I can... Well, what's wrong, Tarzan? Well, someone's very carefully drilled a hole into each of the food parcels. They're That's... alive with white what? ants. White, white ants? All the food spoiled? This is some of your work, Delarie. Do I look like a man who would enjoy starving? See what Burger has to say about this. He's been carrying his own food. I suppose your food supply is all right, Herr Burger. Of course it is all right. I've been carrying it on my own back. Yes, but why? Because I can't eat the swill the rest of you seem to enjoy. 
They've got a sensitive stomach. But your conscience isn't so sensitive. You'd just as soon see the rest of us starve so that you can get the gold without interference. I swear I'm not responsible None for None of us shall starve. I'll hunt for our dinner, but you will all have to get along with each other until I get back. I'll make them behave themselves to the point of a gun if I have to. <laughs> What happened to Berger? Uh, He's been shot. A little of your discipline, Mr. Beaumont? Certainly not. Uh, but Deladier and Berger started arguing the moment you were out of sight. Uh, I got good and sick of it and ordered them out of the camp. Uh, they hadn't gone beyond the fringe of the trees over there when I heard a shot. I see. Much as I've mistrusted Berger, I don't like to see him dying like this. Uh, Perhaps I can dig out the bullet and we can stop the bleeding. Uh, Tell Berger this will be very painful, but I'll try to be as gentle as possible. Uh, then. Uh, can you see it? Yes, it's not really embedded very deeply, but it's in a critical place. I can just get hold of it. Well, can, I, can I help you, Tom? No, I'm getting it now. I think I can. <sighs> you can't help him now, Tarzan. No, poor fellow. But I did get the bullet out, Beaumont. It's a thirty-two. by a strange coincidence, the same caliber as your pistol. My pistol hasn't been fired. You can examine it if you like. What have you done with Deladier? My men are holding him in that tent over there. I saw no gun on him. I admit I couldn't find his gun after the shooting, but he's responsible, all right. He killed Berger, and he undoubtedly killed Johnny Convey, too. Who set that fire? Tarzan, did you find out? No. By the time I pulled you and Deladier apart, whoever it was, it made his escape. I don't believe it was anyone from outside the camp. I think Deladier here set the fire in order to kill the rest of us. See here, Beaumont. I see perfectly. The gold is very tempting, isn't it, Deladier? You ought to know, Mr. Beaumont. Tarzan, I demand that you help us tie up Deladier and take him back as a prisoner. We have no evidence of his guilt on any of those charges. Remember, we suspected poor Herr Berger just yesterday. He, we didn't even believe he was a scientist. Well, if he'd shown us the papers we later found in his wallet... I personally am less suspicious of Deladier than I am of you, Beaumont. Oh, perhaps you and the Frenchman are in this together. Don't forget Berger was killed during a period when you were out of sight of the camp. Perhaps you were hunting. Um, perhaps you weren't. If we're through with our accusations for the night, maybe we can all get some sleep. Well, we, we are awake, so we might as well get on. We should reach the cave by dawn. Well, I'm for pushing on tonight. All right, perhaps it's time we got this over with. I have a feeling that the sight of our goal will make the murderer reveal his hand. The safari reached the jagged rocks that protected the cave just as the sudden Congo dawn broke over the jungle. Tarzan watched Beaumont and Deladier carefully, but neither of them dashed forward. Neither revealed the all-consuming mania for gold that leads a man to murder. They walked slowly forward toward the cave's yawning mouth. Together, the three of them entered the damp, inky black cavern. Cautiously, they approached the corner where Johnny Convey had hidden his treasure. Down to the ground! I don't know who you are, but I'm ready to... No, don't push my arm anymore. I give up. All right. Come outside while we can see you. Right. He's a rough-looking character, all right. How did he find out about the cave? Who is he? Why did you fire at us? I... I thought you were animals or savages or something. I've been lost in the jungle for days. I just wanted in their box. It is... A likely story. Just a moment, Beaumont. He may be telling the truth. Oh, I, I, I am telling the truth. I, I didn't touch any of the gold. Maybe you just got here. Maybe you didn't have time. You and your continuous suspicions, Beaumont. I think the man is telling the truth, and we ought to help him. He got badly scratched up in that skirmish. Uh, Mr. Beaumont has some first aid equipment. If you'll take off your shirt, we'll paint those oh, scratches. No, no, I don't want to take off my shirt. Why? What are you trying to hide? You can't make me do it. I won't. I'll do it you. for you, then. Oh, yeah. Gold nugget around his neck. The one poor Johnny Convey wore. Oh, no, you don't. You're staying right here, and you're answering a few questions. I've got my gun trained on him, Tarzan. You can count on me if he starts any trouble, Monsieur Tarzan. Well, it looks as though Lulu didn't bring you any more luck than it brought Johnny Convey. I should have left it on him. Who are you? Why did you kill him? To get the map. I was a bartender at a cafe back in Omdumar. I heard Berger and him talking about the gold one night. I thought I could get here before the rest of you, but you kept getting closer and closer to me. You were afraid we'd meet and that Berger would recognize you. That's why you killed him, too, huh? Oh, yes. Go ahead. Kill me. No. No, we'll take you back to Andamara for punishment. And we'll take Johnny's gold back, too. So that three people in America may have the things he'd planned. <laughs> it's ironic that they have to be purchased at the cost of Johnny Convey's life. We 
We hope that you've enjoyed our story of Congo murder and that you'll remain for a preview of our next exciting story of Tarzan. It is a strange world, this isolated village of the Karmiki people. At one side of the Maji is the mission school and the tiny church. At the other, the temple of Miyomoko, the moon god, and the Hema of Miyomoko, its high priest. The constant struggle between the high priest and the Reverend Collier, between paganism and Christianity, flares into a dramatic battle in our story of Congo Christmas. Included in our cast were Jack Moyles, Eddie Firestone, Raymond Lawrence, and Jay Novello. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. Listen to our next story, Congo Christmas, another thrilling episode of The Lord of the Jungle.